All right, so today we're gonna follow up on a previous video I did where I installed one of the ARB single pumps into the Jeep. Uh, we're gonna be doing this on the Jeep Gladiator today, but some of the questions that I've had has been about some of the wiring that I did. So today I'm gonna to cover more of the wiring side. There's a lot of extra wiring in this. If you aren't doing um, like lockers or anything where you need these two additional switches. Now it is all laid out here, but it can kind of be confusing if you don't know what all of this means. So we're gonna go over with that. And this is all my leftover from the first project. So we're gonna go over and show you what we gotta do and make this work. All right, so first things being first, you've got your main two wires. You got your positive and your negative coming in. And on the negative, you've also got the little second negative wire. That's just gonna be connected straight to the battery. And that is your incoming power coming to this main block here. Once you're getting in here, this is where we're gonna start dissecting it. And we're gonna cut back all this electrical tape from here all the way back to our relay and switching it all the way up to all the other wires so we can get in and get out what we don't need, um, such as your switch one and two. Since we're not using an air locker, we have a Rubicon and we're gonna take off some of this extra wiring that goes back and forth for all this extra distance since we just have a single on off wire or on off switch up in the top. All right, the way I like to do this, one of two ways is if you grab a razor blade, you can kind of just put it down right at the line of where you can see your wires are already going at. And you're just gonna run it up a little bit. Sometimes the type of razor blade that you have can be better or worse. I like the flat blade or one of the slander ones like what comes on a regular uh, razor blade. I don't really like using the uh, holders that they come in just because it seems to be easier for me to work by hand kind of up close in that area and I can be a little bit more fine-tuned on what I'm cutting um, just kind of holding it with one hand and coming into the second like that so we're just gonna finish undoing that all right so as you can tell on this part here what we're taking out is just your switch one and two I'm doing this because where I'm mounting all my switches I don't need all this extra wire there's a lot of extra wire if you're mounting this in your actual engine bay. Now, if you are running this all the way back into your interior vehicle to have switches separately, you probably would not want to be doing this. Um, but these are ways to kind of mess with it. Uh, your red, yellow, and your blue, white. So you see your red, yellow coming in and your blue, white. These are running so when you turn your ignition on that the light on the switch actually comes on. And then to the dash illumination, is I'm sorry the ignition is it going to be for when you actually have your vehicle turned on it provides power to come on and then the light is when your like headlights or anything else would come on I'm gonna have those basically hooked up to one switch so that when the light when the switch is in the on position both of the lights will come on and both of them will be off when the switch is off I'm not worried about having constant light on that switch being it turned on so I can see where it's at everything it's underneath my hood I only want to know when it's on so that's the way we're going to do it. So we're going to cut those off and I'm going to go through some of the rest of these here. All right. So as you can see, I've already cut some of the extra. I've just cut the red off of right there and I'm going to end up taping this up and possibly even redoing that. Same thing with the negative right there. Um, I'll worry about that when I get to that point. The red is the incoming power, just like the blue is incoming for the lights. Once it gets on the switch, it then comes all the way back down. Uh, sorry. It, Power comes into the switch from the red. When you turn the switch on, it's gonna be coming back down through this red, and that comes all the way down to your pressure switch. The pressure switch then allows the uh, electricity to flow through it going to the relay if the air is needed. If the air pressure has already been met, it cuts off that and turns the pump off by connecting that through the relay. So that's all we're doing here. The green is not needed since that is for the auxiliary one and two switch to come through the other solenoids to trigger them on and off for the uh, the black or sorry the, for the yellow or for the green those are both the uh, first cylinders one and two so we don't need either one of these I'm just going to cut those off and do away with that amount there so that's the breakdown of this switch here and we'll go over this as this gets in so it looks a little bit cleaner than what it is here um, and how to clean it up and protect your wires and everything. All right, so as you can see for the manual, I've hooked it up the same way. Again, both the blacks are just ground wires. One is for the, the lower light to come on. The other one is for the upper light to come on when the switch would be in the on position. So that's all that is. Again, the blue is doing the lower light and the red um, would be for when the switch is in the on position. 
sorry, the incoming power on that, and then your outgoing on um, the red there. So that's base setup down here. Um, on the incoming for the red and the blue, these all will end up connecting these as one um, wire together so that there's always power to this. But again, the light will only come on when you turn it on. I'll go over that a little bit more. In All right, and just to show you guys kind of how slow this goes, it takes a little while. I'm about this far along after probably about 20 minutes. And all I'm doing is kind of watching the curve on it. And I'll take and just run a very light push. And I'll kind of curve the wire. Let it fall into the kind of that groove so you're not cutting the actual wire open. But just enough to cut the electrical tape and just peel it back a little bit and then just slowly peel all that off and we're going to undo all this area just so we can go and work in it all right so as you can tell we've got all of it off these are no longer needed we're just going to throw this to the side we've got this on we're probably still going to do a little bit cut down with the wires and i'll go over that a little bit later as far as um, how we're going to reduce some of this uh, from occurring and i'll show you how we're going to do that and then on our main wire, we've got obviously our main two, and all these wires, all the electrical tape is off. So let's go ahead and go outside, and uh, I'm going to get this part mounted up inside the Jeep, and we're going to go over the connection of everything else on it. All right, as you can tell, we are going to be installing the Way of Life uh, mount. They've created this one for the single air compressor, which is what we're installing. It's more than enough for doing your tires, even a second vehicle. Uh, as long as you're just not running constant all day long, you know, filling up everyone in your group is going to do more than enough. This is also going to be the heat shield. This is going to end up mounting up on it also. It'll mount here, and then we bend it out, and this comes onto it. We have custom made, and I'm going to show this here in the video also, a mount bracket. I've got one of the other videos. We've got... one of the um, catch can for the oil catcher up here so we had to make this one a little bit differently than we did on the my wife's and the one that I actually started where you saw a little bit bigger and that's still gonna sit up in this area right there so before doing that I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the switch and get this part here installed that way it's ready for the next step and get this mounted up and done and then I'm sorry, going to go over the wiring and how I run that in here so it's hidden and looks nice. I uh, apologize about what you're going to be able to see. It is a little hard, but if you watch the Way of Life video, he goes over this in a lot better detail. Um, I did not remove the inner fender well. As you can see, it's still here. Just kind of pulled it to the side and I was able to get to everything. That's going to be the bottom bolt. And I went ahead and bolted it up with just the mount and then I'm going to put on the compressor next. I have found that uh, I was still able to get the compressor on just as easy. You won't have this cable coming down. That is for the catch can release drain, um, but it all fits up in here pretty well. All right, so we've got our vacuum hose line. Sorry, not vacuum, but our uh, breather line coming up. We've got the uh, total unit installed there. I can tell you, um, I might go ahead and the next time go around, I would mount the pump to the mount ahead of time and get it in with the three or four bolts. Um, either way, it does kind of suck. Coming back to this line here, as you can tell, I took the electrical tape off this stretch because we don't need the yellow and the green wire. It's going to be coming out. And also, we can go ahead and clip the negative wire right here where it's coming in and split to these. These, again, are for the solenoids if you had lockers going in. If you had lockers, you would not want to be doing this. Not Rubicon lockers, but aftermarket air lockers. So we will pull off the green and the yellow. And put those off to the side because they're going to be out of play for right now. So with doing this, this allows us to keep our relay up top. We're going to run this power wire down and then we're going to run that across also. So we're going to get that in. All right, as you can tell, I went ahead and taped up that little bit of a distance, and we're gonna end up shoving this down back behind here to make it down to the pump. We're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket, and we're gonna take off this one, this one, that one, and then we're gonna use a small flathead screwdriver, and there's a whole bunch of little clips in here, and we're gonna pop those to expose that, and we're gonna run this wire all the way through and then out over a little outlet over there. 
All right, so now that we've got these two 10 millimeter bolts off, we're just gonna kind of lift up on this and get it out of the way. You're gonna take the screwdriver, you just pry up on it a little bit and it will pop out. And we're gonna do that the whole way. Once getting those out, we're gonna end up coming in here and run this wire down the inside of it just like this and then let's move over to this side all right so we're gonna pop these And I'm going to show you my little trick spot that I've learned that most people don't see. So let's get this wire tucked in. And once you get it in through these two, if you look right here, there's a little bit of an out. So we're going to take that wire and we're going to push it down and out of it. Then coming from the bottom, we can go ahead and pull that all the way through. And this kind of just gives it an extra way to kind of hide that wire and not to bring it all the way over and on the other side of the fuse box. Once that's in place, as you can tell, we've got plenty of wire on it. We can snap all these back into place. back and then we're gonna put the bolts back on all right I do apologize about the lighting but the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shove our wires down back behind obviously you probably don't have the catch can but that's gonna enable us to get back down there and get the wires hooked up and kind of hide these back behind all right this is where customizing your setup will come into play one thing I forgot to do is we're actually gonna run this wire all the way back with the big thick wire inside of here. And we're gonna end up cutting it down here, but I'm gonna run it first. The reason why is this is gonna supply our positive power for our switch to turn on, which will then trigger the relay. But this right now is going to the relay, or I'm sorry, this is going down to the pressure switch to allow the relay to kick on. So we're gonna kind of use this wire as two. We're gonna run it across as power to the switch, from the switch to the uh, pressure switch and then from the pressure switch it allows the relay to turn on All right, so as you can see we're hooking this up. This is the wire I was telling you we ran across it will supply the positive to the switch Where the large wire is supplying the positive to the actual pump uh, The ground is coming part of the wire that ran through so that's coming up here And then this is the, the red wire going down to the relay itself Sorry to the pressure switch to come back up to the relay to allow it coming on the back side what I did was I just spliced in so there's one power wire coming into the switch and then I put a second connector on it So it's connecting to both sides for those lights to come on at the same time. I'll show you that This is the outgoing wire For when the switch is turned on and then of course your two grounds um, Doing the same way I just connected there. I like to use heat shrink. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, shrink those down and Get the battery connected and test it All right, I'm still gonna finish cleaning this up a little bit but as you can see we've got the the large negative and then the small negative both connected there coming off i've got the large negative or sorry the large positive and then the small positive that we ran and i've got a small fuse on it right here and then we just wrap that we're going to clean this up some zip ties and all that to kind of make that look a little bit better but coming over this side let me point out one thing that i was wrong i'm going to try to notate that earlier but here when i did the incoming power to here and here it left the light on at all times which means it's going to slowly drain the battery so the proper way to do it is on the outgoing side when this incoming wire and the switch is turned on, it pushes power coming to the outside, and then we're gonna also push it to the other side for the light. So as you can tell right now, neither light are on, both are on. So there you go. I'm gonna finish putting this together, uh, put some tape and some wire loom on this and clean it up.
All right, and you see we've got it bolted in. I am still waiting on the last hose part. This is the one that comes with the kit, so it ends up sitting like that. But the other one will actually screw and tighten down on the back side, and then we'll install the hose here to go down. So that's your end result there. And as you can tell, when we turn it on, you can see that. I'm gonna put my finger down on the hose outlet so you can hear that it actually does shut off with that sensor. So as you see, the lights will stay on since the switch is turned on. And as long as there's pressure, it will cut off. If you have any other questions, let me know. Like I said, this is just one more kind of design. I'll probably end up removing that and sticking it down below it like on the other one and it'll stay a little bit more flush. But until then, we've got a good solution.